Hey guys, Christian Madaf Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2013 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so our opening paragraph tells us that Glenroy Enterprises consists of two small businesses, Glen Company, which makes fresh fruit juices, and Roy Company, which packages dried fruits into different combinations called fruity snacks. On the 31st of December 2012, the following balances were prepared by the two firms. Okay, so we have some information for Glen and for Roy. We have opening stock of fresh fruits for Glen, dried fruits for Roy, followed by purchases of fresh fruits for Glen, dried fruits for Roy. Then after that, I'm seeing some closing stock balances here. Fresh fruits for Glen, dried fruits for Roy. Now, I'm seeing some expense items here. So we have wages for both entities, salaries of supervisors, transportation in of fresh fruits. Now, that's carriage inwards. And I'm only seeing an, um, a figure there, sorry, for Glen and none for Roy. Then we have insurance. And now we have a couple of items down here. And these look like non-current assets. Juicing machines for Glen, packaging machines for Roy and provision for depreciation on said juicing machines and packaging machines. That's followed up by some more expenses. I'm seeing maintenance for both entities, packaging, delivery, and advertising only for Roy. Now at the tail end here, we are seeing opening work in progress and closing work in progress only for Glenn because Glenn is the entity that's making the juices, whereas Roy is simply buying and repackaging fruits to sell. And of course, there's a sales figure here. So we'll see what that's used for. Now there's one more set of information just below this. Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so we have some additional notes here. The first note tells us that electricity expense of 10,004 and rent expense of 47,000 are shared equally between the two firms. So these two items were not presented in the list of balances above. So we're going to have to remember to come back to these items. The second note tells us that depreciation on all non-current assets is calculated at a 10% on cost, so that's straight line method. Now you're seeing the word fixed here for assets. So this was the 2013 paper, and this was before they made the transition to talking about, or referring to these assets rather, as non-current as opposed to fixed. Okay, let's take a look at the requirements. So part A says that we are to prepare the manufacturing account of Glen Company with the year ended 31st December 2012, showing clearly the following items. The cost of raw materials consumed, prime cost, factory overheads and cost of production. And that's going to be followed up by preparation of the income statement, trading and profit and loss account for Roy Company for the year ended 31st December 2012, showing clearly the cost of sales and total expenses. Okay, so we are obviously gonna to have to work these things one at a time. Let's start with the manufacturing account for Glen Company. Okay, so before we jump into it, if you need to, well, first of all, know how to do a manufacturing account, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you need a bit of a refresher or if you need to start from scratch with manufacturing accounts. If, however, you are comfortable and very well versed in preparing manufacturing accounts, then let's go. So as with any statement, you are going to head it up properly. The name of the entity, the name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. So the first thing we're going to calculate here is the cost of direct materials or cost of raw materials consumed. The first thing we need is the opening stock. So under Glenn's column, I'm seeing opening stock for fresh fruits is 1,340. So we're going to put that in. And then to that, we are going to add purchases. So again, under Glenn's column, I'm seeing purchase of fresh fruits, 145,670. Now, if I remember correctly, there was a transportation in on fresh fruits, which is carriage inwards. So we're see, sorry, we're seeing it there, 5,950. So we're going to add that to the purchases figure. And then we're going to add that figure to the opening stock to give us the cost of direct materials available for use. From that, we are going to have to subtract the closing stock of fresh fruits, which in this case is 2,850. And then that's going to give us the cost of direct or cost of raw materials consumed. Now, we need to add to that, I'm seeing here, wages. So wages in a manufacturing setting, unless otherwise stated, can safely be assumed to be direct labor. So we're going to add the wages here, and there were no other direct costs for Glen Company. So the sum of all of the direct costs will simply give us the total for prime costs. Now, just by the way, it's not to say that there are wages that are not direct. There certainly are indirect wages, but because the question didn't give us 
any information to discern whether some portion of this 518 was direct and some portion was indirect, I think we have to assume it's all direct. Okay, so now let's go on to the overheads, factory overheads. So going back across here, we have a few things up here. First of all, we have salaries of supervisors. Uh, but the transportation in was dealt with the, uh, oh, sorry, that was the carriage in on the raw materials and the insurance. So let's put in those two things first of all, salaries of supervisors and insurance. If we scroll down a bit, we're going to see maintenance, 4,100, right? Let's put that there. And of course, now we're going to have to deal with those things on the other page. So let's pull that up very quickly. Okay, so let's start with the electricity. Electricity expense of 10,004 and rent expense of 47 shared equally. So we're going to take that 10,004 and we're going to divide it by two because sharing equally between two things means dividing by two or finding a half. 10,004 divided by 2 is 5,200. And then for the rent, the rent says 47,000. So we're going to take 47,000 divided by 2 and get 23,005. Now there's also a depreciation item here. Depreciation is calculated at 10% on costs. So let's scroll back up to see the cost of the non current assets for Glen Company. So Glen Company has juicing machines of 26, sorry, worth 26,900, 10% of which is simply 2,690. Now, those are all of our overheads. So, what we have to do is add them up to get a total for overheads given here 68,480, which we are going to add to the prime cost of 201,910. And that's going to give us the total production cost in Q. Now, don't forget, we have to make our adjustments for work in progress or work in process, as some of you all know it. So we have the two balances here, opening and closing. So we add the opening work in process, we subtract the closing work in process, and that's going to give us the cost of goods manufactured of $271,000 for Glenn Company. Okay, so that's the end of part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so we're doing the income statement for Roy Company for the year ended 31st December 2012. Of course, head up your statements properly, please. The first item that we're going to put there is the sales revenue. And we're seeing here, it says 406500 There were no returns in. There was nothing else to put there. So no, we go straight to less cost of sales. So of course, for cost of sales, we're going to start with the opening stock. And the item is under the Roy Company column. That's for dried fruits. So that's 2490 to which we are going to add purchases. So let's pull up the purchases figure under Roy's column, 271. Wasn't that the figure we just got in the manufacturing account? Interesting. Now there were no returns out or carriage in for Roy company. So we're simply going to add the opening stock to the purchases to get the cost of goods available for sale. And of course, from that, we are simply going to subtract the closing stock of dried fruits, which in this, which in this case, sorry, is 5,470. And that's going to give us a cost of goods sold or cost of sales of 268,020. Subtracting that figure from the sales revenue figure gives us gross profit of 138,480. Now there were no other revenues, so we don't have to worry about that. We simply have to go to the expenses section. So if we come back across to the table here, we'll go in the second column. Um, we'll see wages 31.5, salaries of supervisors 89, insurance 2003. So let's put those items in. Now we're going to skip down a little bit and we're going to populate some more items. The maintenance of 38.10, packaging of 79, delivery costs to supermarkets or carriage outwards of 75.20, and advertising expense of 2080. One, two, three, four. Right. Now, don't forget, we also had the same electricity and rent that we had to put, we had to share between the manufacturing account and the income statement. Let's scroll down to take a quick look at that information one more time. Okay, so here we go. So we're sharing 10,004 and 47,000 equally between these, um, the, sorry, the manufacturing account and income statement. So 10,004 divided by 2 is 5,200. 47,000 divided by 2 is 23,005. And don't forget, we also have the depreciation, right? 10% on cost of fixed assets. So what was the fixed assets for Roy? Let's scroll back up and take a look at that, shall we? So for Roy, we just had packaging machines valued at 30,900, 10% of which will give us 3,090. So those are all of the expenses totaling that will give us 115,800. And of course, subtracting that from the gross profit above will give us a net profit of 22,680. And that's the end of the question. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2013 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about anything in the video, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you might find some useful PUA handouts. As per usual guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.